Y'all look at this. Is that not the prettiest thing you ever seen? It looks like something I'd feed my chickens or birds or something, but that blend is gonna offer the wildlife so many different food options and... Nobody harvested this deer. Nobody even saw this deer on the hoof. Houston and I hunted him really, really hard early season. And I never showed you guys a picture. <laughs> and this is why, right here, look at this. Well, what's up guys? It's Daniel from Arms Family Homestead and I'm back out at the Mill Creek property. We haven't been over here much lately. Uh, you guys remember back in February, we did a prescribed fire and burned about 65-ish acres. And we're going to go around and look at a bunch of stuff today, check on the progress of how things are regrowing and re-sprouting and doing. We got, I don't know, inch or two of rain just a few days ago. Got the pond full back here. But I've been kind of waiting, not procrastinating, but just waiting for conditions to get right to do some planting. I want to do, I bought several different seed blends from a company called Green Cover Seed. And I've got a, several different things that I want to do here, but a lot of different blends for wildlife. Not for grazing, not for cattle or livestock or anything, just wildlife blends. I bought a pollinator mix. so. As you can see, this field's, well, you might be able to see it. This field's covered in wildflowers right now that are just starting to bloom, Indian paintbrushes and a couple different things. But uh, we're going to fire up the, the old TYM 5835 and do some planting with this woods cedar. Because this thing is actually, the cedar is actually going back to woods. It was just here for me to demo and test out for one year. And now is the perfect time when I need to be planting. So I got a lot of stuff I want to plant here and some plots that i want to do at home so we've got to get this thing in gear and get going because uh i think in about three weeks or so it's going back to woods i'm gonna miss it because it's not something you use every day but this cedar plants all different kinds of seeds we can do native seed we can do large seeds cereal grains clovers alfalfa pretty much anything it's not really a no-till drill but it's perfect for wildlife food plots and pasture mixes and all kinds of different things and it fits perfectly behind this 58 horsepower tractor so i'll show you what we got now like i said i purchased all of this seed this is less than half of it it's just what i brought today i'm hoping i can get quite a bit of planting done today because as you can see we've got cloudy overcast skies and chances of storms this evening so if we can get this in the ground today and get a half inch of rain on it that'll be perfect so here's what we've got it's been sitting in the barn a little while, so I'm trying to turn yellow. Warm season pollinator mix. So this is a lot of flowering plants. And what I'm going to do with this is kind of hit the edges of some fields. Not necessarily plant a whole field with pollinator mix, but just along, along where I have roads and trails, you know, on the edges of fields and stuff, we can hit with this pollinator mix. So it's it's got radish, cabbage, mustard, mustard, clover. I got a bug on my finger. Cone flower cosmos marigolds buckwheat sunflowers i'm trying to read up through my screen okra chia uh millet sorghum cowpeas mung beans sun hemp and decorative gourd mix so a lot of different flowering plants that will uh, be good for pollinators bees and all that kind of stuff warm season soil builder we've got a few places around here that you know this field looks great because we you know it's this is our hay field or part of our hay field but there's some areas on this property that just the grass is pathetic and has some really poor, poor soil. So I'm going to try this. I've never, never planted this, but it's a warm season soil builder. I did a cool season soil builder at home and it lasted all the way up until we had some really, really cold temperatures. 
you know, down in single digits for a couple days. But flaxseed, rapeseed, mustard, cabbage, buckwheat, sunflower, okra, sorghum, sudan, millet, millet, iron clay, peas, uh, some soybeans, mung beans, sun hemp. So a lot of the same things that are in this are in this soil builder, but just a little bit different varieties. Uh, that's the warm season soil builder. That's what warm season pollinator mix. And this is really their huge summer um, product that they make for, for deer. And I've got several bags of it. It's their summer release blend. You know, you notice all of these are blends of seeds. I'm not just planting just sunflowers or just millet or just sorghum. For all of these, they're, they're blends. And uh, deer don't just prefer a monoculture of crops i mean yes if you plant 100 acres of soybeans they'll stand out there and eat it but deer browse they they like to just nibble here and there so summer release blend smart radish trophy rapeseed buckwheat sunflower sorghum iron clay peas soybean mung beans sun hemp so a lot of the same things but i have one other product that i want to show you and it is not actually well it is a blend but it's a blend of all the same thing now this last uh blend of seed that i'm planting is going to go all the way out by the road there's a long strip of county road that boundaries borders up to our hay field and i get text messages from people all the time hey man there's a bunch of deer in your hay field well that tells me as if my friends are seeing bucks in the hay field <laughs> the road hunters are too and we live you know southern oklahoma there's there's some uh non-rule following folks around so we want to protect our deer herd as much as we can from illegal road hunters, poachers, people driving around drinking, spotlighting at night. And when they can see across a 20 acre hay field that's nice and lush and green and the deer are out there grazing at night, well, we need to block that. And I've never planted anything like this before, but we're gonna try it this year. And it's called their view blocker mix. So it is forage sorghum, yield max BS. PPS sorghum, dwarf forage sorghum, uh, different other kind of dwarf sorghum. So it's a blend of all different sorghum plants that will get really tall, like supposed to get eight plus feet tall. And I'm gonna plant a strip about, I don't know, I'm thinking 30, 40 feet wide. Like say this is, this is my fence. We're gonna come off the fence for about 30 feet and plant. And hopefully this makes a good stand and pops up and we get a good stand of sorghum to uh, grow all summer long. And then when fall comes, people won't be able to see into my property from the county road. And part of the reason there is this place is, is pretty special. And when it comes to the deer herd and the deer population, Houston harvested a really nice buck last fall with his crossbow. But that was just one of about seven or eight bucks that we were after. So there was, there was, we've got 160 acres here. There's a guy that leases about 160 next to us. And then to the east of us, a friend has about 700 acres leased. And we all kind of share pictures and share trail camera pictures and things of what we're seeing and who's seeing what bucks and all that. And listen, there was, there was a reason we were over here hunting hard and heavy all year last year. And you don't, you know, most guys, most deer hunters don't, don't like to kiss and tell. They don't show off their big bucks until after they've been harvested because you have road hunters and poachers and people that'll just come in and trespass and kill your deer. And if you're posting pictures all over Facebook of these big bucks, people are gonna find them. Well, we had one that was really, really, really special. And between the three property owners, nobody harvested this deer. Nobody even saw this deer on the hoof. Houston and I hunted him really, really hard early season. And I never showed you guys a picture. <laughs> and this is why, right here, look at this. Yeah, now that we're way past deer season, I don't know that anyone harvested that deer, but he was a ghost. He disappeared on us. He was here all summer long. And we never once saw that deer on the hoof. Don't know if he's still alive, but we know for a fact that none of the three of us in the area harvested him. And I think if anybody else did, we would have seen pictures on Facebook. That was a walking giant of a deer that we hunted hard. 
and hopefully if we do everything right we can feed these deer feed the herd help them grow big antlers because they're fixing to start growing antlers and uh put on some mass put on some pounds make a healthy deer herd give them everything they need to survive to thrive and all the things you know we're planting different blends for we're going to help grow antlers it's going to help does with uh, milk production and help fawns put on weight and all the things and turkeys and ah, just i love it wildlife is special to me i love making a piece of property better than what it was when i got it and making it better for the wildlife so with that said let's put some seed in here and do some planting So just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about, you got this county road that runs, you know, this whole length through here, all the way to that tree line back there. And everyone that drives by can see straight across this property. And uh, yeah, I have no doubt a road hunter would love to shoot a big buck out in this field come this fall. So we're gonna come off this fence, route, fence line, fence row right here, 30, 40 feet, we'll make several passes and see if we can get some tall sorghum to grow as a view blocker to uh, protect this field. And that's really not the only thing that you can do with a view, a view blocker crop like that. So, and it, it can do multiple things. Let's say you're hunting in a big field like this and you don't have a, like a fence row or a hedge row or something, but you got a big food plot planted and you want to get to your deer blind on the other side of the field, you could plant this view blocker stuff you know 15 20 feet wide and then that would allow you access to walk in and not spook deer that might be out in that field just an idea out of seed there there's a, i mean i got just a little bit i'm going to use that up before i go refill we've got uh several strips back and forth probably one two three four five six or seven i don't know exactly but guys if you've never seen this uh precision cedar from wood you've never seen one like it i'll kind of give you a quick rundown it's got disc in the front so we're we are disking a little bit i would call it minimal disking the grass will grow right back fairly quick so you break the ground up a little bit open up the seed bed and then you've got this spiked roller that's what drives your seeds dropping this is all on chains and pulleys in here so as this turns i just you know letting it spin around here as that turns the seeds fall out and those spikes kind of help push the seeds into the soil and then in the back we've got a cultipacker and this just floats along the ground and we can set this up with different seed boxes to drop either behind that roller in front of the roller depending on the size of the seed and what we're planting i'll kind of give you a quick look let's just find a random spot where you can see the disc come through and open things up and it's just dropping those little seeds right in that furrow obviously it'd be best if it was completely covered up but with just a little bit of rain the rain will uh, 
get us really good seed to soil contact and this should take off i hope Y'all look at this. Is that not the prettiest thing you ever seen? It looks like something I'd feed my chickens or birds or something, but that blend is gonna offer the wildlife so many different food options and kind of surprised at how many sunflowers are in here. This is that uh, summer release blend. So green cover has a lot of different options. And like I said, this was, I bought this, not sponsored in any way. I just really, really like their seed blends. And uh, I heard about them on a YouTube channel called Growing Deer, Growing Deer TV or Growing Deer TV, whatever it is. Um, I watch them all the time, and they help blend, help come up with these blends, and it is very wildlife specific. So, let's do some planting. I've not planted anything on the pond dam since last winter, last fall, like not this just recent, but way before. But I guess what I threw out then all went to seed and uh, it's, it's grown back really well. So I'm gonna hit a few strips with the cedar across the top of the pond dam. But for the most part, we've got a lot of good green cover already on the pond dam to keep it from washing out. The pond, uh, caught quite a bit of water the last week or so but I don't know I've got some ideas and theories on the pond you know we built this pond but it's really not it's not quite big enough to stock it with bass and things and I built it thinking it was going to be a little bit bigger than it is and I'm considering coming back now that we know that it'll hold water it does have some issues with the spillway pipe but I'm considering coming back now that we know it'll hold water. That is the main thing. We weren't sure if it would hold water. Um, hang on, I gotta raise this thing up and turn around here. Now that I know it will hold water, I'm thinking about coming back in and expanding it and making it quite a bit bigger so that we can stock it with fish. Because right now it's really, I mean, you could put some bluegill and things in it, some bait fish, but as far as big predator bass or even catfish, it's really just not big enough trying to get turned around here. I have a hard time walking and talking, much less operating heavy equipment and talking at the same time. That might be a little dangerous. But the pond does look good. I mean, it looks nice and healthy and clean and clear, but uh, it's just not quite as big as what I wanted it to be. Fire is uh, fire is such a magical thing to me. It's just it's part of the land. It's part of the part of nature, and it's a it's a way that nature heals itself. I mean, this field 
and all around we burned in February and look at it now it's as green as it can be a lot of good growth coming up and uh, as humans we've removed fire from the ecosystem in a lot of areas Smokey the bear did a great job of preventing forest fires and preventing any fire any good fire and fire is a great way to control unwanted vegetation cedar trees in our area especially but a lot of other things and it did a great job here and I can't wait to do it in a for I guess probably a couple years on the Kirby place where I've been working cutting all those cedars and we're gonna have one heck of a fire there I promise you that I'm sure a lot of you are curious what uh, some of this property looks like after we ran a fire, especially through the timber. Look at there. Killed that cedar tree dead. D-E-D. -E I think. That's right. Isn't it? I'm kidding. Anyways. So running a fire through here, we had several inches of, of uh, leaf litter on the ground. And as you can see, it's opened up. You can actually see soil. We're getting a lot of new growth out of different plants. Not all of them are what we want but it's uh it's all native stuff that's just going to regrow and some areas as you can see are a lot greener than others depending on uh, the amount of sunlight that makes it to the forest floor we've got pretty much a closed canopy forest in here but there's some areas that's got a lot of a lot of green popping up so this is a spot look you can tell right here this didn't burn at all no fire touched this and uh, over here, just a few inches, few feet, whatever, you can see there's there's a lot, lot, uh, lot less leaf cover, and this will all open up and be uh, not perfect right now. I'm not trying to blow smoke up by anybody that this is perfect cover for anything, but over time, and with uh, with a little bit of care and maintenance, we can thin this out a little bit open things up and have places where more sunlight hits the ground. Look, goal accomplished. That's a dead cedar tree. Anyways, places where we have more sunlight hitting the ground, we'll end up with more um, forage on the ground too. So a lot of folks come in and they thin their timber a little bit, do select cutting, take out a few things here and there just to give that forest floor a chance to green up. See, there's an area I'm talking about through there how green it is in there you're getting a lot more pounds per acre of food out of your uh, timber when it looks like that versus when it's just you know overgrown and everything is uh getting choked out at ground level where which is where your you know your deer and turkeys and everything likes to eat dead cedar tree dead cedar tree dead cedar tree i would say that was a very very uh successful prescribed fire that come through here i can see a lot of dead cedar trees a lot of dead undergrowth that will open up new life for the good stuff all right i'll we'll hop off the tractor for a minute and walk over here and take a look at a field where the fire got incredibly hot this was a a a big open field that was full of i don't know two foot tall native grass a lot of cedar trees i've actually come back in after the burn with the skid steer and that tree reaper and cleaned this up a lot but this field guys a year ago you couldn't walk across this field you couldn't see across this field look at this <laughs> so much different so much better uh the, so that top part up there you guys saw last summer i was in here with the uh the disc mulcher and i mulched a lot of that up and quite honestly, it, it worked great. The disc mulcher worked great, but the fire, <laughs> the fire worked better. I'm not gonna lie. The fire was a lot less work, a lot less stressful on the land. When you talk about, you know, adding all this junk on top of the surface and stobs and sticks and all that, the fire consumed a lot of what I had to spend diesel and time and energy cutting up. Now. Obviously, there were a lot. There were a lot of dead standing, dead cedar trees that had been burned and killed that I came back and chopped up a little bit. But this side was a lot easier than the side that I mulched, honestly. And here's a here's an area where I did not get through with the skid steer, 
but before we get there, this is this is something that never happened before. We're in a, a wide open field, okay? I'm not gonna say this is completely a natural spring flowing through here, but this didn't this didn't uh, hold water before. When this field was covered in brush and cedar trees and all that nastiness, this low ditch area right here didn't hold water. And that's a perk of getting rid of those cedar trees is you have a lot more groundwater. And I'm really kind of curious about this because we're on the side of a hill right here and you move just a couple feet, you dry ground, and then all of a sudden mud and standing water. It's actually been a few days since it rained. So I'm kind of curious if maybe, I'm not gonna say it's actually a spring. I'm gonna keep following this. There's a brush pile that the former owner had and he pushed up some cedar trees. I'm not saying the, the water's bubbling out of the ground in a spring, like, a, like an actual spring, but it is probably just seeping out of this hillside and collecting in this low spot. And I'm gonna say it's probably down in there somewhere because it's just rock over here. And I don't really see much water, just a little bit of a wet spot. So I don't know, who knows? Keep cleaning it up. Someday we may actually have a little bit of a spring bubbling up in here and we could kind of dam it up and hold the water. Really small pond, but a place to water animals, you know. Livestock could come and get a drink, not livestock, wildlife. Wildlife could come get a drink. So back to some of the areas I was talking about where fire came through, definitely killed all the undesirable cedar trees and brush and all that stuff in here. And, uh, it's it does look like kind of a mess but this is a perfect example you can see where that cedar tree was there's nothing growing on the ground and it'll take a little while of that to, to get all that cedar mess out of there all those cedar needles on the ground and stuff before life really comes back there but we killed everything in here that we didn't want to survive basically there was a couple bigger trees in there. Look like they might've been damaged pretty bad, but as you can see, they're both green and uh, killed the briars and the brush. So I'll probably, in theory, try to come in here with the skid steer and finish cleaning a lot of this stuff up so that it looks more like this area because that is amazing. I love it. This, this field was unusable for anything when we bought this place. I honestly never expected to see water in that ditch right there. I, there's not standing water puddles anywhere. It's just in that one ditch. And that, that's a direct result of getting rid of those cedar trees that suck all the water out of the ground. I mean, uh, we've still got a lot more to do, a lot more to go. We'll get there eventually. I don't, I don't know that my goal is ever going to be to remove every single cedar tree off this property but I'm gonna get close. I'm gonna work towards that. I don't think it'll ever actually happen, but the more we can remove, the better the land will be. about to get rained out. It's uh, kind of spitting and sputtering and it starts raining for a few seconds and quits, but I won't be able to run this planter, run this cedar if it rains very much at all. I don't want to sit out here and get wet. Now, I'm not going to lie. If we're, if we're talking about tractors, this is a TYM 5835. Okay, let's try that again. Ran out of memory, ran out of storage. Anyways, TYM 5835R. I love this little tractor uh, a lot. I really like this tractor. It's a big frame tractor. The TYM T574 that I have hit a rock. Couldn't see it. Anyways, the 574 is a hy hydrostatic tractor. This is not hydrostatic. It's a shuttle ship. The power shuttle. I, I like the hydrostatic, but that cab on the 574 or you can just sit there, heat and air. Oh, I tell you, if I could combine the two, take the 5835R tractor, put a cab on it, they just don't have this 
model with a cab, I'd get rid of the 574, I think. Although the, the hydrostatic transmission is really good for front end loader work and stuff, but I've got the, the skid steer that I use for moving dirt and gravel and rock and all that. I really love this tractor. It's a it's a great little tractor. And by little, I mean mid-size. Medium-sized tractor. It's not little. Hey, Mr. Almost Completely Dead Cedar Tree. Making room for the oak. I like it. Well, y'all, I hate to quit <laughs> while making good progress. I got all of my seed planted except the pollinator mix. And I just ran out of time because it's about 10 to 3. Got to run to town to pick up Houston from school. We both have a haircut scheduled for 3.30. We have to meet with our uh, financial advisor at 4. Emily has softball, I think, at 5, 5.30. Supper, the rest of the day is pretty much over. So... Didn't get everything accomplished that I wanted to, but I got a lot. And I can't wait to see how this green cover seed does. If it does anything like it did back in the fall and winter, it'll be amazing. So planted some different blends, planted some different things. Don't typically get to do, in the past, I just really never have done much spring and summer food plot stuff for, for deer and wildlife and turkeys and all that. But while we still have this woods precision cedar, I want to get as much as I can planted as fast as possible because now is go time. We got that thing last year pretty much after it was a little bit too late to do much spring planting. It was already hot and dry and not right conditions. Things are perfect right now. It's a beautiful day. I, I'm telling you, it's hmm, almost got rained out. Not quite. It did get just a little bit muddy once once we started getting a little bit of rain on the on the grass. That roller. That spiked roller got a little caked up with mud, and you can see our our uh, cultipacker is caked up with mud pretty bad. But uh, when you're making progress like that, it's hard to quit work. So, I guess that's it for me today. <sighs> I love spring. Isn't it beautiful out here? It's amazing. I love it. So, I love this place. I love you. I love everything. It's like, it, life is good. I don't know why the hippies were happy, right? <laughs> even though I didn't live through that. Anyways, remember, do something today to make somebody smile because you never know, it just might change the world. Sure do miss old cameraman Ron. We're headed to Pensacola, Florida next month in May, and it's gonna be strange not having Ron there and hanging out with our good friends. So anyways, guys, that's all I've got for today. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. You guys have a great day, and as always, we'll see you on the next video.